the holy grail in scheduling is using machine learning to optimize your schedule, right? Well, the first step in being able to do that is being able to, using an LLM, yeah. being able to return a, all the work orders and, and the scheduled work orders in the order that they yeah. are currently scheduled. Yeah. This is going to change everything for schedulers. And all I kept thinking about was all the possible implications yeah. for Copilot. So we're here at Hanover Messi at Tulip's uh, booth in building 15, right? Hall 15. Yep. Uh, Hall 15. Um, I got Eric Marinded, who's the chief business officer, Mason Glidden, who's the chief product officer. Congratulations on your promotion, Mason. Congratulations on your uh, horizontal move to chief business officer, Eric okay. Marinded. So we're doing this conversation after I've already had extensive, uh, a chance to ha see multiple demos on the Cold Pilot, which we showed you guys last year at Operations Calling. Um, it's getting ready to launch next week, right? Yep, next week. It's going out everybody. to all Tulip customers yep. starting next week. So let, let's start with this. What have you guys been doing? What's Tulip been doing since we last talked last year? Yeah, well, it's been a busy year since we uh, last saw you at Ops Calling. And since Ops Calling, it's actually, believe it or not, only been like six months. Right. But, but uh, no, we've uh, done a ton of, uh, well, I'll let Mason speak to the uh, some of the new releases we've done with automations, the frontline co-pilot, a lot of things going on there. Also on the go-to-market side, we've just had a lot more customers signing up for Tulip and transforming their operations by giving fundamentally the people at the front line the right tools to improve their operations, and that's cool to see. So more mature implementations, more customers going global, so it's been an exciting six months. Awesome, Mason, where's the product going? Where, yeah. So what have you guys been doing? So Obviously, Copilot's coming out next week, but. Last September last year, we were just about to launch automations, our sort of autom uh, headless logic RPA tool for manufacturing. That's been going great for us, have a ton of customers using it, millions and millions of uh, usage per, per week right now. Uh, Frontline Copilot's launching, about to. Uh, we've seen that explode in beta over the past six months, which has been awesome. We also just released LTS 12 uh, t last week, actually, which has been a huge step forward for life science customers in particular. We added form validation, we added custom user roles, we added some security options, some e-signature improvements. So really doubling down on that vertical and trying to give them the tools they need to scale their operations. Which, by the way, it's it, it you know we'll, we'll talk about this in a couple minutes, but honestly, I mean, I really walked away from our you know, the demos yesterday, going, well, I think. Everyone should be using Tulip, in my personal opinion. I, you know, there are three products I'm super, super high on. Highbyte is one of them, Portainer is one, and Tulip's the third, right? And I'm talking about these platforms all the time. But the thing I took away from yesterday's demos was, which, and that we have a demo that uh, we already pre-filmed, but one of the, the big things I took away from yesterday was, wow, this really is a game changer specifically in life sciences. Yeah. The, the ability to essentially take stacks and stacks and stacks of paper, yeah. scan them in as PDFs, train train yeah. a model, and now through a chatbot be yeah. able to extract value from that yeah. data. When batch records, validation, yeah. you name it. It's a, it's a game changer. It's like one batch might produce a thousand pages of forms. Right. A thousand pages of human data that what are you going to do with, right? And okay, you could do something with all the machine data before, but now you actually have the tools to start processing understanding and mining that less structured data. And if you talk about it, like basically the implementation here is, you know, yesterday it was essentially Eric hammering on the keyboard and going, uh, you know, what is, uh, how do I glue together leather and metal? What's the best adhesive for gluing together leather and metal? And it spits back, you know, use Loctite 455. Okay, what if I get it in my eyes? And then it spits back exactly yeah, yeah. what you should do in the event you get it into your eyes. And, and, and the beauty that I, I love is all of the responses return a with a reference. Yep, exactly. So, or a list of references. It's been like a core fundamental right. thing. It's hallucination free yep. and it's verifiable, which is really critical, particularly when you're talking about safety related data, right? So the key thing here is you can specify the data set on which this model is going to train. So we have one model that's only trained on your technical uh, safety specs, another model that's trained on all your machine technical specification manuals, you know, another one that's trained on this event happened, what was the next step we took. So the point is you can get highly contextually relevant responses that are verifiable. So why is it saying, do I want to be really sure? And it'll point you to the specific place in the documentation where it says, 
you know, rinse your eyes if you get Loctite in your in your eye in this case. Well, one of the other things that stood out for me was the implications on scheduling. So one of the I, I had Eric veer off of his planned <laughs> his planned demo, yeah, yeah. and I said, hey, why don't you ask it to give me all the orders in order by due date for SKU 001? Yep. Yeah. And he typed that in, and it returned the orders yep. in order by due date for yep. SKU 0. And the first thing I thought was, well, that's that's the first step. Like the holy grail in scheduling is using machine learning to optimize your schedule, right? Well, the first step in being able to do that is being able to, front, using an LLM, yep. being able to return a, all the work orders and, and the scheduled work orders in the order that they yep. are currently scheduled. Yep. I mean, so the big thing I walked away was like, oh, this is going to change everything for schedulers. I, I kept I, I kept thinking, I was at dinner with another integrator last night, and all I kept thinking about was all the possible implications for Copilot. And now, I strongly encourage you to get the demo yourself because we took a video of Mason showing me the demo. So you have the app Copilot, and then you have the, what do you call the? The Tables Copilot. Ta tables Copilot. And, the, operator copilot. and yep. the app Copilot is a whole total game changer when it comes to yep. development. Now you can bring in a completely green developer, have them click on the app Copilot in the upper right hand corner and say, Build me this. Yeah, I yeah, want do, this. Give, yeah. give me, give me uh, all the apps you have that have anything to do with work orders. And it literally lists all the apps that you've built, have anything to do with work orders create me one of those apps. I mean, it's it really is quite incredible. Yeah. All right, so Hanover Messi, everybody makes their big announcements, right? Yep. What, what were you guys here, what, what, what were your key announcements that you guys wanted to make this week? Two things that we're announcing this week. The first is Frontline Copilot going into general availability, so all customers are going to get Frontline Copilot starting next week. The second big announcement we have is our composable MES app suite. So the idea here is, you know, everybody 99% of our customers are building some MES functionality using this composable approach. What we're now doing is giving them a position, saying, look, this is a common table model that you can use to deploy uh, composable MES in your operation. Now, you're going to need to do some configuration, you, but, but these are all the core components you need to be able to take care of that, and it's all in our library. There's a Tulip University curriculum that goes along with it. There's knowledge base that goes along with it. So you click a button, you import these templates. It's already pre-wired to the common data model, and then it's got all the educational uh, and enablement resources that come along with it. Awesome, and where's the product going? So for the next, let's say the next year, yeah. what, what should we expect with the product itself? So two things to highlight. One, continued development of Copilot. Uh, this is starting to spread through all parts of the platform. I think it's not long before there's a Copilot first experience as your primary way of interacting with the platform. Two is ecosystem and extensibility. There are sort of a couple areas we're really pushing hard on here right now with our partners. Uh, one is with uh, deploying custom edge drivers, allowing customers, uh, you know, on our benches right over there, we have I don't know, five or six partners integrated in, We're starting to roll those into a more official program, let them write and ship code on our edge devices, also be useful internally inside of a, a given customer, as well as integrating with APIs. We released a bunch of new public APIs for Shopfloor a couple months ago. We're going to have more coming out throughout the rest of this year, help enable that ecosystem and connect everything together. And real quick, is there operations calling happening this year? Yes, yep. absolutely. It's, uh, same time? Uh, I, October is when we're planning. October. Yeah, officially, yeah. I think we're going to be announcing official dates here pretty soon. Okay. But absolutely, we're going to do it bigger, we're going to do it better, okay. and we're going to try and brag, bring you back as a speaker. So <laughs> I'd love to come back. Make sure you can. And, and one of the big things that stood out to me last year at operations calling, and we talked about this in the content that we shot there, was that it was literally the first con conference I'd ever gone to where the vendors were integrated together. Yeah. Right, yeah. that that was yeah. a requirement yeah. that they integrate. And Open that, ecosystem, that's right. the future, you yeah. know? It was a really, it, 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 in this year, if you get a chance, you should absolutely go to operations calling if you can. Uh, one last thing, and this is a thing I was brainstorming. I was really thinking about this uh, at dinner last night after the demos. Mm -hmm. I, wa I was just thinking go to market, I'm like, holy shit, you know, with, with how this is going to change the game for life sciences specifically. Now, Tulip's for everybody. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's, it's for all, all industry, all manufacturers. But I was specifically thinking about life sciences and how Copilot is a game changer for life sciences. Do you guys anticipate that the demand for Tulip in life sciences because of the, the value Copilot is going to bring to life sciences customers is going to drag your go-to-market strategy towards life sciences? Yeah. I mean, that, well, what, what do you see that? Well, I mean, the first thing I want to say is that we've been focused on life sciences from 
almost day one, our second customer was GSK, right? So we've been in life sciences for a long time, and we've, you know, we've born with the QMS, you know, validatable CFR 21 part 11 compliant platform. Uh, we've gone through about two dozen audits from all of the top pharmas. If you think uh, the top 30 pharmas, about 15 of them are running on Tulip today. So we've always had quite a presence in life sciences. I would say in the last two quarters, we've really seen that pick up, and I expect that trend to continue. I don't see it fundamentally changing our approach or our go-to-market strategy. At the end of the day, what we're trying to do is give people better tools to optimize their operations. And I don't care if you're in general manufacturing or in life sciences. The, the considerations and the problems you might want to solve might be a little bit different, but getting you the right tools, that doesn't change. So we have a team that's focused on answering, you know, how do you validate Tulip? How do you work with our global system integrators to get that done? Some of that has a life sciences nuance, but it's not going to fundamentally change how we do business. And what's the number one feature request right now? Outstanding feature request right now. Good question. Um, we've had a bunch of asks recently for MQTT right. As people use automations to integrate Tulip into a UNS, you okay. can pull in and we're going to push, be pushing out right the later part of this year. Okay. Uh, also starting to That's see. That's awesome. Yeah, That's a big deal. Super excited for yeah. that one. Another sneak preview for you. Yeah, <laughs> big yeah. deal. Uh, we're also seeing a lot of requests about governance and scale, about how you look at differences between apps, how you handle better approval flows, how you handle permissions, and working towards better structures for managing that at scale within Tulip on different types of assets. And you guys are still on the exponential growth curve. Yeah, Is that yeah, the, yeah. Yeah. Come on back, our gra that graph that we showed you last September just keeps doing yeah, one of these. Yeah. So, All right, Eric, uh, Mason, I pre really appreciate you guys. It's a pleasure to have you, Walker. Thank you, man. As always. Appreciate you guys. Yeah. Thank you.